Please, I will see you in this section. So if you guys could just take your drinks, bring your libations to the side. We can kind of get started a little bit. Uh, so you've been listening to the sounds of DJ Shatterproof. Here at Coast Town Fitness, you my way of pizza. So I see some flags waving already over in that corner, and I love how beautiful all my people look. Because I think it's Jamaican people. We're, we're the biggest. Yeah, we see it. We see it. We see it. We see it. <laughs> so as you guys can see, we're going to have a lot of fun today. I am Michaela Rose. I'm on the website called Silent Buy. Uh, thank you, Georgie, for having me host this evening tonight. We have a lot of special guests and a lot of fun for you guys. But when you guys think of vibes, I'm sure you think of what? <laughs> you just want to play? Okay, what do you think of when you hear vibes? This is going to be a lot of interaction tonight. We got some music on the other girls today. So what do you think of when you hear vibes? People? Okay. Energy. Energy, okay? Shout it out. Good time. All right, all right. So Caribbean people are known to have good times. So, you know, we'll pull out what? Nice. Nice. So a lot of people say tonight is called pure. Nice. But we said beer. Beer. Nice. All right. That, that's like three Jamaicans. So <laughs> for once, we're not, out, we're not, you know, the majority tonight, which I'm glad to be here and see. Um, when we talk about vibes, there's a lot of association to energy and music and just getting together and connecting over food and drinking. But there's so much, so much that happens behind the scenes that we're not even privy to. So this is a Caribbean and tech entrepreneurship. So we're going to be talking about behind the scenes, behind the vibes, what's happening in our community and how we're kind of bringing it to everyone else from a global perspective. You have the DJ. You know digital has changed the way DJs have even started playing. I'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, we have Krista in the back who's going to be doing a fitness demo a little bit later. Called Walk Out. Her, her uh, company is called Walkout. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of different fitness, soca, Zumba related activities. But she kind of does it with a little bit of vibe. You know what I mean? She, and she, you know you go to, to the Zumba class and they're like, one, two, three. And you know, we be like, so that, that's what we're going to see a little bit later. We add a little spice to the team. We add what? Pure? Bye. All right. So first up, we have an app developer. And I think it's super, super interesting what he's doing. And he's going to power us. So, Ravi, I want you to come up. The name of his app is called Find Your Fans. And it's a B2B primarily app. Um, and it's launching very, very soon. But it really has a lot to do with how the vibes get to you guys through the artists that you love. So Robbie's gonna kind of take us through what his company's been about, how it's um, interacting with the music industry and not just Caribbean music, but global music, and how he's kind of impacting our community and the music community through his company. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> well, <laughs> So my name is Robin Rapizun, uh, and I'm really happy to be here and honored to be here. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so we're gonna get Robin to dance a little So Find My Fans is essentially a data analytics tool that analyzes data from social and streaming sources for bands and artists around the world. Uh, what does that really mean? Well, essentially, we're taking data that artists and bands are already generating, and Putting it on an interactive map. So what that means is an artist who does who has no idea how to use data or knows why it's important will be able to visually see their fan base, their streams, and their likes from all over the world. That sounds like it's not very appealing, but as it turns out when we were doing market research, these artists, big and small, they have no idea where all their fan base is located. In the digital world, in the streaming world, music goes everywhere. And there are pocket communities of listenership all around the world. You talked about Soka. I, I, I saw so, uh, Soka in Zumba classes in Singapore. Uh, so it's getting out there and people don't really understand it. We've analyzed data from big and small artists, millionaires to people that are just coming up. They've had fan bases in places across the world that they had no access to. And that's when we decided.
decided that this is actually something real. This can actually help artists, by the way, who are entrepreneurs, um, music entrepreneurs, just like myself, kind of take their their game to the next level because in this this ecosystem, in the music ecosystem, where you're being booked is the only source of revenue. So if you can ex expand that network, you're essentially putting more money into their people's pocket. And we think this is going to be massive, and we've been promoting all around the world. And we launched in, in November, and we've only had uh, good vibes um, when we introduced this to young entrepreneurs who, you know, they call themselves performing artists and we know them as singers, but when you really get to know them, they're entrepreneurs. They understand the business side of the game, and they're also offering a live song and they're going to put it out. But as soon as that's created, uh, as that's created, they go back into business and marketing mode. And um, um, the similarity between all entrepreneurs and people in the music industry is really the same journey. Uh, so we know this is going to be big, and we're excited. And, uh, you know, I'm free. So, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you you uh, <laughs> 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 yes, yes. Um, so, in terms of, if you kind of touch upon the artists that we know publicly, they're kind of stepping up their business acumen. And I think what a lot of people don't understand is Dana is really sexy right now. So y'all get a picture around me now because he's going to be like on the Forbes list in a, in a very short amount of time. Uh, I predict that. I predict that here today. Okay. I appreciate All right. it. All right. So in terms of just understanding. Uh, <laughs> he's like, I need to get higher. Right. Um, so in terms of being able to branch out, I know you kind of started with some of the artists. I know you recently went to a global music conference in Spain. Um, tell me about that and tell me about what it was like kind of sharing this product with international uh, Oh, I think well, you're right. Thank you. Oh, yes. Uh, so I knew this was going to be, this was well received in different communities amongst up and coming artists. And even popular famous artists were just curious to, to visualize what their fingerprint is on the world. And we, Thought and, and we sort of knew that this was kind of putting the marketing department of a major record label in the hands and in the pockets of every artist. So essentially, the democratization of data and analytics in the music industry. So we knew, I knew we had something, but when I got there, I honestly walked in and not knowing anybody, and they were actually talking about me specifically on the main stage because a lot of what the, and that was like thrilling, um, a lot of what the problems in the music industry are really about how do you use this data? Like how do you turn information and numbers on a page into actionable items? And what is that like? You know, what do you do with it? And we figured out what to do with it. So a lot of what we're going to be doing is combining uh, data sources and overlaying them on top of each other. So what that really means is for the first time, people are going to see in one stop like all their streams, all their streams locations, where their followers are coming from. And this is all the we hope that it's going to be free for everyone and we're monetizing it differently, but we want people to use it uh, and to show us what they're doing with it so we can kind of add services in the long run. But we, like, I honestly felt, I'm glad you asked me this, but I honestly felt like I one did it because I, you know, I was a grant for the first time in my life, but, like, just the feedback from the artists, even afterwards, you know, it's not just the conference here. Canada's a really small town, and everybody goes to the same bars and restaurants and clubs. The amount of like rappers and singers that just legit heard about me um, and just coming up to me and kind of giving me feedback. It was, it was kind of staggering. So now we have like these access to potential ambassadors if, you know, just from that, those few days in, you know, London, and Toronto, Montreal, you know, obviously the New York and the Caribbean already have strong relationships here, South Africa, Australia, um, and, you know, a lot of these companies that are in Europe they're booking companies and, and, and they track data as well. They have not seen something like this. Um, and they all have like outposts in New York. So it's exciting to know like how we might be able to work together. But building that relationship now is, is really important. So a year from now, there's already trust built. Because our most important thing is getting this to launch in Spain and later this year. But it's nice to know those relationships that have really kind of been built in the South by Southwest United States where people know who they are. 
um, with uh, the university. So many encouraging pieces that I was kind of giving to them. So in terms of timing, you're, you're basically, uh, what I love that you just touched on is you're networking now with somebody that is going to want to receive it. And you've it's been, and you've been kind of working on it. So tell me a little bit about how you started this and how long it is, has it taken to do this. Okay, so I, so there's, there's two start dates that I have. About five years ago, I started getting interested in the music industry. And I started kind of investigating as I needed a hobby. And I started, you know, I was listening to the sofa a lot, and I kind of had the idea of, like, why is this music not played everywhere? Because it's, you know, it's just the modern version of sofa, which sounds like, you know, we consider Persian music and local music, but really the production value has gone up so high, and, and it's the new people that started coming in kind of modernize it. And a lot of, like, people don't know this, but a lot of, like, original music, when they mix and master and they're produced, a lot of times they have to work in LA, and not just in the Caribbean. So what does that really mean for original music, right? Um, but, um, but, but I kind of started really chasing these words, like, well, how does this all work? And I, you know, I started studying, reading books, eventually taking classes. After a couple of years, I started getting really good at this. I became like an expert at this. Well, I have a job, but it was really more of like this hobby um, that I couldn't put down. But about two years ago, two and a half years ago, I said, you know, I think I can turn this into something because I was still focused on the Caribbean world, and it was just such a lack of like business value um, in the Caribbean world. So there wasn't a lot of great managers, there were few, but there seemed to be such a large disparity between the amount of performers we have and the amount of business talent that we have. So I started kind of looking at that. But about two years ago, I realized that I have a background in tech, I have a background in data. You know, I don't really want to be a manager, you know, that's just a hustle. Uh, but I had the right background to kind of develop something like this. So I started kind of um, pushing the tech tech side of things. Just because number one, I knew that music is always going to be popular in terms of funding. And two, data is the new gold, it's, it's the new oil. Um, and I knew what to do with it just because of my day job, that's what we did. We turned data into actually the item and built tech tools. And when it kind of, those two pieces, I said, oh my God, look, I actually am already trained in doing this. Why don't I see what I can do? And that's really the genesis of the last two years was building out the business plan, making sure I had all the relationships, and then promoting. And now I'm doing this full time. I was, for a while, I was still working. But now this is my full time thing. And you think that in November, when we were launched, uh, that all the eyes are drawn to all the tools we got, and the foundation is like rock solid. So that's sort of like the two minute genesis of how this whole work looks. I, I, like when I started, I didn't know I was going to do it. Yeah. It was just, it just kind of happened like that. So I like the natural progression of how you kind of build it kind of taking what you know and turning it into kind of just a hobby or like uh, a business that you could be passionate about. And I could lead, I was positioned to lead that um, because that's also the important thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I moved back to that. You had a question to me, but 
which is why they rely so much on uh, managers and booking agents uh, and labels. But as you can see now, like the labels are giving out like 360 deals where they make money from every part of your merchandising, your touring, your music licensing. Now they've added streaming into what counts as record plays. So Cardi B went platinum six times, not because she sold that many records, but because she streamed 300,000 times through combination of Spotify, Pandora, and, and YouTube. So that those things were not heard of. Sure, yeah, so there's a couple of things there. Um, there's a couple of things because then you're right, and, and the idea of like a booking agent, to get a big booking agent, you already have to show like $50,000, in New York, you have to show like $50,000 in like the booking fees already. So that already kind of puts you at like a mid-tier type touring artist, which a lot of people just, they're not at that level. There's so many people that, that aren't at that level. And record labels that are like now like venture capital investors um, in the tech world, so like they won't talk to you for like a, a, you know, a big deal unless you're already ready to go to like the 1%, right? So our value proposition or another one of our value proposition is, yeah, Great, you're servicing the 0.1% of artists that can go globally. But what about the reach? The other 99.999% of artists and bands out there, who's taking care of them? No one. So that's why we think that we'll be massive. Just because there's so many more people that we can serve. Um, and, and the other thing that you touched on is about the CDs. It's an interesting time to be in the music industry because, like I can say, I've been in that for about five years. But there are people out there that can say they've been in 30 or 40. How come it really matter at all? 40 years ago, they were selling the day tracks. You know, so the model that they're conditioned to work within has changed so many times. But they had to start learning things. And it was probably after me. So now I'm in a position where I'm pretty much near the end of it. You know, I'm in a position where, even though it's only been a few years, like I'm the one that's taking the lead and explaining about how things work in this age. So it's become this really fascinating thing because the industry has changed. You know, age and, and, and experience doesn't really matter in the same way that it would in, say, like, law, law or something like that, where experience matters. Like, like, I was ahead of the game five years ago. So now that people are now catching up to what this thing is about developing. Because they're now starting to see it from time. Right. I have your Yeah. So here we have the. So I, can, so I can just jump in and just kind of talk. It's going to be really simple. We try to decom. We try to make this like the easiest public, yeah. So we'll be doing two things, right? So um, Cardi B was mentioned. So here she is, and here is her repertoire. All her different songs and the data associated with her songs. So let's click, take a look at Bodak Yellow, and there is just, it doesn't show up too good on the computer, but that was just as actually a map of, there's other countries in here. Um, so darker means more streams, um, top countries where she's being listened to, Let's take a look at maybe Spain, and you can, like I said, this is really supposed to be Spain, but these are the different territories within Spain where she's being listened to. So Barcelona um, um, and, and, and these other places where she can now visualize, and maybe there is a club that's willing to pay her a million dollars to come there, or she can be more active about chasing these leads. Um, and this is really what they do at, there's a person in data analytics at, at, at record labels, and there aren't many of them, but this is essentially what they do, like that, and, and access to everybody. And, and obviously there's weekly, monthly, yearly trends, and, and that's, kind of, that's kind of it. Um, the other thing, because, and, and this will work, it'll work like this for everyone. And the other thing that we're tracking is charts. So the other part about, because we're tracking location data, is, you know, who's the number one reggae artist in Brooklyn right now? Well, who's the number one reggae artist over the last week in Jamaica. Nobody really knows that, to be honest with you. There's reputation and who you think is being played on the radio, but that's just based on relationships. Um, we'll be able to figure out who's being liked and streamed the most. Uh, so here's an example of like the best pop artists over the last week in Barcelona, Spain, and their rank, right? And this is massively important, especially in an industry where things have to change um, and people are trying to break through. So there could be an artist here that nobody's ever heard of, but they should be on the radio in Barcelona, Spain because they're number three. So that's kind of like the cool part. The, the app itself is going to be populated with 
um, many, many, many artists. We don't know how many yet. Uh, and if you're, you aren't on, I mean, obviously you can follow people and favorite people, um, but, but if you're not on there, you can easily connect your accounts. And that is it. That's how you get on, that's how you use it. And um, it's really that simple. Like I said, our goal was to really make this as easy as possible. Um, eventually, when we want to get into bookings, we'll layer on top of this. Um, Discovery, I mean, not for, I mean, discover, so it's not really meant for fans, so you're not going to discover music, but the search button up top, on the top right, uh, you could be, be able to search for song and artist, and if you're not, if you can't find the song and artist there, you would have, if you, you would get an option to connect the count. So that's how we're going to cycle in the smaller artists that might not be on there. Okay, last two questions. One, traditional means is something so called APIs, which so a lot of my social distribution sources give data for you. And the reason they want to do that is because we understand that data can be used in creative ways to solve problems, right? Facebook has to run recently because of a company called Cambridge Analytics that was using their data to elect the president and they were working with different governments and entities and all that. So privacy issues came into play um, and that's kind of why we're being really cautious about how we display data, what level of granularity we want to get, and try, and try to figure out where the conversation is before we launch. And we don't want to put ourselves on Katie and Luke, and the Luke here, we have two of the incredibly public thinking companies. The problem with their trying to get people elected, and I think most people agree that that includes um, um, the data that wasn't really thought about for those purposes. Um, but we, that's, that's a question that we have to answer. Getting data, we have to figure out what's the smart, most appropriate way to show and deliver the data. That's more effective, right? Because we don't want to come down to, I don't think we can get it like, to like a free level, but we want to figure out what the biggest, most appropriate level would be. I mean, uh, that's the most complicated challenge we have right now, is just following that conversation to say, 
these are we're on the right side of this graph. I mean,
talk to Shadow Booth a little bit about his journey as a jewelry DJ and kind of how he's using his skills in a different way. So come, 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 come,
He's the richest DJ in the world, period. Out of all DJs, there's a quadrillion DJs. And he's the richest one. I made that up. I made that up. That, that, you know that's a lot, though. You know that was a lot. So that, and, and, and that's because he can play a party for four to five hours and play only his music. And they're all bangers. Like, you know what I'm saying? You're going to rock out the whole night. Nobody else can do it. And you got things like that will put you on the map because not only did you make it and you produce and it's your song, but now everybody else wants it because it, 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 it's, it's ringing bells and everybody loves it. So you got to have it in your playlist because they're going to have it. So me trying to start my own lane is, I guess it's not my own lane, but that's the, the lane to be it, if you, you know what I mean, to be successful because, I mean, I could DJ house parties and weddings and clubs and until, until I can't DJ no more, but, you know, eventually that, that's not where the money is, being realistic, it's not where the money is, it's, it's, it's making your own music, and you know what I mean, and becoming, becoming a, 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 a brand, you know what I mean, so that's the lane I'm trying to do, I'm trying to brand myself, I, I was just saying it maybe two weeks ago, and I'm going to stop wearing everybody else's clothes. Just start wearing my logo on it. Yeah, for real, my logo on my t-shirt, my scully when the winter time comes, and scarves make socky name. Just wear my outfits. When you see it, you're like, oh, that's cool. DJ Chaz, okay, that's cool. Or you might even be like, where you get that from? Depending on, you know, it's an outside, you know. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? We're ready. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? You might be like, where you got that from? And I'd be like, oh, you know, I get you on, you know what I'm saying? For a little price, price. Merchandise. No, so, so. So you recently partnered with Rockline. I know it's kind of like a nostalgic name to a lot of people in the world, um, but they're still going strong. Still music right in the car, mm -hmm. and they have a new radio app, and you are the only Caribbean DJ on the app. So in terms of, <laughs> can you keep it on Wednesday? Wednesday. Well, first of all, you gotta download the app. So from the app store anywhere, it's Rough Rider Radio. You download the app, and every Wednesday from seven to eight, I'm on. It's it's as of right now because I'm in Connecticut. It's pre-recorded, so I make my mix, and then and then they'll they'll play that that time slot. But um, eventually, when if, you know, God willing, my my schedule opens up a little bit, and I'll be able to travel down here, and I'll be on live. So I, I like what, what about you know playing in apps and you know we did a session on Tuesday talking about podcasting. You know technology has allowed us to do more without being there. So the fact that you can you know DJ remotely or send record pre record a mix and send it in to be played and paid. I mean, that allows you as the DJ to kind of work more avenues at the same time. So I think that's really interesting. That, and I think it's something that you don't traditionally think of. Like, if, if you're a DJ or you're in that space and you're like, oh, I want to get on radio. But what's the path to radio? Now, it's the same as like a journalist. Like, I want to write for Rolling Stone, but how do I get from being an unknown writer to being... A, a staff writer at you know the biggest weekly newspaper, uh, magazine. Um, so I think being able to use the platforms that you have the opportunity to use uh, is important. So thank you so much. Well, I appreciate it. Instagram, What is DJ underscore Shatter with two R's? Proof. DJ underscore Shatter with two R's underscore proof. You're just so cool. <laughs> okay. exactly and I also, if y'all are interested, I got business cards in here as well. Okay, here we go. There we go. There we go. Right. Let's look at you. 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 Let's look at
this year, that for sure. Um, but if, if it is going really well, um, Tyrone is one of the instructors. He's one of the first ones, um, and he is uh, a huge, a huge. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna talk real quick, and then Randy's gonna do like a. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. All right. So guys, we're gonna have two more quick things before we open it up for networking. Um, Kai, Randy from Kaitika, which is a Haitian organization. They, IT. ITN organization. <laughs> um, is gonna do a quick presentation, and then I'm going to wrap up. So just keep me.
so what we offer them is our um, ideas from our experience. Uh, um, and I, myself, on the board, uh, I'm a software engineer. So when uh, it comes to, you know, like, uh, helping them strategize on how to, you know, like, level their technical, uh, level up their technical uh, ideas, right? So that's one of the places where I contribute, but we offer everything from um, uh, all, all types of men mentorship and, uh, and things like that. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Technical difficulties. Cool. So we started pretty tan, and uh, up till last year, the idea was about community building, right? Uh, and obviously, pretty tan was uh, when the earthquake hit, uh, which is when uh, David, our founder, uh, who's here, he went to Haiti to reconnect. He reconnected with his mother and noticed how his mother's house was actually one of the um, lunch pads for a lot of the uh, uh, like rescue efforts that were happening in this area, right? So then he saw, uh, he had the vision to actually like make, uh, and actually her, his mom named it Tita, and Kai Tita means Tita's house, right? So uh, she, he saw, this happened, he saw, he had this vision about how Tita's house could actually continue to function as this lunch pad for, um, for these uh, efforts to actually reach into the community, right? So, um, if you go to the next stage, so what we did is by opening Impact Hub uh, this year, we start. This is the MVP, right? So it's already operating, and there's already uh, a lot of a lot going on um, uh, down there. Um, a lot of different sessions, uh, just as the ones that um, I've benefited from through Illicit Mind, and then but basically helping people. Basically empowering people with knowledge first, right? And also networking, right? Making introductions and things like that. And also, uh, so, and, and the long the long term vision uh, for the space is by 2020 for it to be a fully sustainable space running on like fully solar powered with like, you know, all the usual. And also, that's very also, uh, I forget the term, but that's like earthquake proof. Right? <laughs> so, because that's also something that we're more mindful of after 2010. Right? Where, where is this located? So this is located in the capital city, as is everything else. Right? So uh, it is, it's very, uh, everything is centralized in the capital city. Uh, what? How many nations are in the house? All right. Cool, cool. So we're in Perugia. Um That's like, <laughs> yeah. So, um, so yeah, so that, that's, that, that's the vision, but we're, it, we're getting there one step at a time, right? So first we open the door. Second, we're working towards uh, actually uh, having uh, a, uh, launching a console, right? So that when, uh, and I'm gonna get into the diaspora of the next institute that we're launching, but the idea is to be able to uh, fund uh, the social impact side of our project by actually having, uh, you know, like, uh, so, so we're looking at sustainability in like, you know, all in a many different facets. Uh, next slide, please. The thing that, uh, that uh, another thing that's very exciting is that we also have been, and this year will be the third year that we are hosting the one and only uh, startup week in Haiti. Um, and it's last year was the first time I participated, and it was truly uh, like the impact was like unbelievable because. And this is how I really got to see, you know, what, what I said earlier about being able to see what what folks down there are doing is so good. I got to experience that firsthand. I got to, you know, like to go there, and I don't claim to be an expert in anything, but to bring just a little bit of knowledge that I have, and to be able to ID with them, and it was so amazing. But, uh, so how many have been to a startup week event uh, here in the States? Okay, quite a few. But basically it's a week, it's, it's a series of uh, events uh, uh, that take place over a week and uh, it touches on everything uh, uh, that has to do with business development, right? So from your marketing to, you know, like your professional headshots, right? To, uh, to again, like uh, many tech sessions, both on demos and things. Uh, so we will, uh, so it's 
coming up on uh, August the third, August thirteenth, and if you look at the next slide. So these are some of the problems we're we're, we're tackling, right? And I'll be sure to make sure that the slides are available. We're basically trying to look at it at every uh, side, right? Both on personal development to actually tackling the macro problems. Um, and this uh, slide has the contact information for for, uh, for the impact hub. Uh, we should make it later. smaller. And then if you go to uh, this slide right here, so the Diaspora Connect initiative, that's the one that I'm, I'm here to uh, you know, talk to you all about. So, they, so our, our mission is twofold. One, we empower the folks on the island. Two, we want to make sure we connect the, uh, those of us who are here, the professionals who are here, to Bring your expertise, bring your knowledge, bring your resources to the island so that we can collaborate together, right? We definitely are intent on, uh, on reversing the brain drain, right? And to make sure that we can you know, make things happen. Thank you for your patience. Woo! And yeah.
everybody is open to and accepting them with this brand or culture to or work. Um, and so that's what this is. So we have had a website for a little while now. We have a post, a Facebook group, a LinkedIn group. And every year I try to grow it, try to do more for um, Target and Tech. And we're at a point right now where it's really important that the collective part of that takes the initiative to support what I've been doing. Right? I never planned for this to just be me. I wanted to find friends and find other Target and Tech. And it really takes all of us here and participating and friends and work in the same room. So simple things as, you know, the food and the space and the venue, I can organize and put together, but also take the collective and say, hey, we want this. Um, bring out this speaker. Can you call upon this panel? We need to have a town hall meeting on this topic. Um, bring that to me, and then I can do the next step of like finding the room. Get a space to do that. Let's facilitate that together. So that's what I'm looking for from this community. I want you guys to tell me what's necessary so that we can all work together to bring it to life to support ourselves, support our businesses, and our ideas. And if you want to get involved, and if you want to get involved, you know, people like the kids, uh, Terry Ann, Jamie, Corey, was they have been a part of this for a minute now. You know, each year they're like, hey, what's the next event? Or what's the program? What's happening? And I've met them through, you know, having this like event. Randy last week mentioned the hackathon. Um, you know, he ran the Adam with a great shirt. So the Adam and Forget Hackathon is the third year of it is happening this weekend, starting tomorrow through Sunday at NYU Magnet. So if you go to sliceweek.com, W-E-E-K.com, you'll see the link to sign up for that. It's a great initiative, a great hackathon. Um, last year we have 175 people. This year we're on track to get about 200, 220 people. So they're, you know, you don't have to have a tech background, but people that really just want to come together and solve um, problems facing the immigrant community using tech enabled solutions. So we have you know, developers coming through just have ideas want to participate. Things like that. Um, the next site we have is TVB. Why? I want somebody to also comment and say, hey, so this is the type of site we actually want to have. This is the topic. Um, and then we'll work together and put it on. I want you guys to come to me. I, I, have, I have a wide access of spaces. I've done over 60 events in the last two and a half years with the same site and other company in this mind. So just let me know and we can facilitate that together. Let me know the topic to table and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And so once that collective, you know, no one gets paid, we'll just that as you guys can see, we have free events and we're doing donations. So please, if you can donate the site, you know, keep the website up, donations are really cool, and supplies of the events is paypal.me backslash site collective and all that fun. Go into vacation payments, how about the pizza, the Hawaii, all, and all that good stuff. Um, I think I'm not forgetting anything, so we're gonna turn it back to music, enjoy the rest of your night, and please, guys, share sites, join one of the groups again, meet up, Facebook, just look for Site Collective or Caribbean with Tech and Entrepreneurship, and it will pop up. Um, or just go to the website and there's like a shared profile on the website. So, Thank you, Thank you so